all of these people in Union Park in Chicago that gave me the creeps. I felt in danger. I felt my wife was in danger. I felt this was really dumb to do. God, please protect us. They've turned everything that God said is good and right upside down. Hey, Jim Scudder here. Thank you all for watching our YouTube channel. And we are really thankful for how many people viewed our video at the Chicago, the DNC protests uh, that we just recently filmed. And it's the most watched video that we've produced here at In Grace. And we're thankful for that because we wanted to bring a spotlight onto these protests and these protesters. And I wanted to talk a little bit more and give you my thoughts for the day, uh, my, my fears, my worries from that day, walking right through the protesters with these huge Israel flags, with huge pictures of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and with my wife and others from our church. There was about maybe six or seven other women from our church. And, you know, it just really worried me that I was leading them into danger. And, and I didn't know if that was the right thing to do or not. The reason we did it was because I'm just so upset with the way the world has risen up against Israel. And I believe that anti-Zionism or even anti-Israel is anti-Semitic. It's anti-Jewish because Israel is a nation that belongs to the Jewish people historically. They're the indigenous people of the land. And they're a democracy. They're a moral people. They have a government. If you look at all the other governments around in the area in the Middle East, there's nothing that compares to Israel. I would much rather be in Israel than almost any other nation on the planet other than America. I feel safe in Israel. Israel has laws. I'm not talking about like every last person, but the people of Israel, they are a good and moral people by and large. It's a people of with a good government, of laws, of a good judiciary system. Maybe even too good because they were trying to change that recently, but it's not like a lawless place. It is a very civilized place. It is a wonderful place with very little crime and, of course, all of the, uh, the word of God that was written there and all the stories from the Bible were there. And, and for Christians and people that believe in God, it is a precious, precious place. And to hear people speaking out against that and protesting and yelling, I wanted to talk about, first of all, what did it feel like for us to go through that? What were my wife's thoughts? And then also, what were some of the things that they were saying and some of the things that were put on our comments and our YouTube page and some other people that contacted us? I want to push back about some of the things that people are saying because these are libels. These are lies that are being told once again about the Jewish people. Why do I love Israel and the Jewish people? The answer is very simple, because I was saved by a Jew. God came into this world as a man, as predicted, born of a Jewish woman, and lived in the Jewish culture, kept the law, the Jewish laws, and was put onto a cross for all of our sins, and rose again the third day. And Jesus, Yeshua, has saved me, has changed my life, has done so many things for me. That's why I love Israel and the Jewish people. Many other reasons, but that's the main one. And that's why I felt compelled when our Jewish friends and Christians asked us to join together and be part of this rally, this march, the counter-protest in Chicago against the Palestinian, I would say anti-Israel protesters, and there was all sorts of other protesters, by the way. There were people that were uh, promoting reproductive rights, which is a sanitized word or phrase that really just means abortion, or it actually means baby killer or murderer. Okay, that's what abortion is. That's what uh, reproductive rights are. We all believe that every woman has the right to reproduce, but we don't believe that they have the right to terminate a life, uh, a soul. And so, obviously, they were there. You had you know, trans rights people there. And again, transgenderism is opposed to God. It's 100%. God said, we made male and female. Everything was good. There's two genders. And uh, everything outside of that is opposed to nature. It's opposed to God. It's not true. It's not real. You have LGBTQ, which are people that are opposing God and his plan for human sexuality. Now, if you're 
a person that practices any of those things, I'll just tell you this, God does love you and you are you are his creation. But when we sin, and if it's adultery or, or if it's homosexuality, whatever the sin is, we're sinning against our creator, the one that made us. And he made us for a reason and we can't go outside of the way he made us. And so you had all of these different activists there, but really the overarching flag was the anti-Israel flag, they, the pro-Hamas uh, chant, and they're chanting things. They were chanting Intifada, Intifada in Chicago. And if, if anyone thinks that's okay, it's not okay. What is Intifada? It's, it's Muslim extremism that says it's okay to maim people, blow up people, shoot people, knife people that don't agree with your religion. That's not okay. Intifada is not okay to yell in Chicago. They were yelling other things, uh, baby killer, and, and they were talking about Israel. And uh, listen, Israel was attacked on October 7th, 2023. They were attacked and it was Hamas that came in and killed babies. Entire families. We have video of it. Oh, it was made. It was doctored. This was Hamas's video. They were broadcasting it live. There's no doubt that Hamas, they're the ones that are baby killers. But the script has been flipped. All of these people in Union Park in Chicago that gave me the creeps. I felt in danger. I felt my wife was in danger. I felt this was really dumb to do. God, please protect us. They've turned everything that God said is good and right upside down. The whole group of people there, I believe, and I'm not saying every last person because there's people that are deluded and they just don't understand what they're doing, but many of them there are literally opposing God. That's how this group formed at the DNC protest in Chicago this week. I felt like God did protect us. We were able to get through the worst of it and it felt demonic. It felt the, the people um, were trying to block us and stop us from the front. And these were so-called security personnel that were part of the protest group. Why would they be trying to stop us, block our path? It's a public sidewalk. We weren't even going right through the protest square where they were all gathered and they had a loudspeaker and a stage and they were talking. We weren't anywhere near that. They were trying to stop our progress. Why? Well, this is their tactic. These so-called security personnel with the protest, you know what they're trying to do is get us to stop. Then they surround us. They taunt, and they were already verbally taunting us, but it, it escalates because eventually somebody in the crowd of our counter-protest is going to shout back, and that turns into assault and violence, and, and that's what we did not want. They said, do not stop. And you see us kind of not pushing, but not stopping, uh, and God was able to guide us. We, we had the Chicago Police Department. God bless these guys on the front lines. They, they did a really good job this whole week in Chicago. And I thank God for people willing to give their lives for our safety and for our security. And they came alongside us and protected us. We were able to get back across onto an island between the protest square, the park, and the road that real close by Ogden. And I felt safe there because the police blocked off us from the uh, anti-Israel protesters. And there, the media descended upon us and we had 20 different major news organizations from around the world interviewing with uh, you know, television networks and papers and uh, you name it, uh, Sky News and everybody were there and we were able to tell our story that there are millions and millions of evangelical Christians that stand with Israel, that love Israel and support Israel. I'm not saying everything that Israel always does is always perfect, but they are a moral people. They do have a good government. Even the army, I believe, is a moral army. You say, no, they're killing so many people, so many civilians. Listen, they don't wanna kill anybody. And if you do the math and you actually find out how many actually have been killed that aren't combatants, it's a very low number. It's a lot lower than you would think. Don't believe the Gaza Health Ministry. Why? Because it's Hamas. There's proof that they've ex exaggerated the numbers. And what does Israel do when they go in to take out a terrorist? What do they do? They warn the people. They give uh, text messages, cell phone calls. They do a, a, it's called a knocker bomb on the top, a small explosive to warn people, get out of the building. What other army does that? Israel does, and they have done an amazing job at limiting casualties. Are there innocent people? There are innocent people. Obviously, there's innocent people because there's children that are getting killed, and, and that's horrible. And we, 
Every time that happens, we my heart breaks and, and we pray for the Palestinian people, the innocents. I think there are more that aren't innocent. And, and the reason I say that, I'm not saying they all are not innocent because there are innocent people. I just said that. But the reason I think that there are more of the civilians that are not innocent are the way they responded to the capture of hostages on October 7th when they brought them into Gaza. The squares of the Gaza cities were full of people chanting, cheering, hitting the hostages. And these weren't just combatants. These were This was the population. So it's a really, really big problem. A friend of mine that's making a film about October 7th, and he made the Hope in the Holy Land films, went into a Palestinian Arab area in Israel just this May when I was in Israel as well. And he did interviews and he just asked people that he met, Palestinians, about October 7th. He interviewed 10 people randomly. He said nine of those 10 said that the attack did not happen or didn't happen as Israel said it happened. And they were denying it, even though Hamas was broadcasting the footage themselves. So that's a delusion. And then he, and I thought, well, at least one person thought it was real. That one person, he said, said Israel deserved it. That's 10 out of 10 of just random civilians in a Palestinian area of Israel. Again, we're not saying all Palestinians are wrong or evil, but a lot of them have bought into this idea that Israel is wicked and Israel is an oppressor. You know what Israel was trying to do in Gaza? All the residents of the kibbutzim along the Gaza envelope, many of them were going into Gaza and bringing people to hospitals in Israel. Very humanitarian. But who were the ones attacked? Those same people that were trying to help the citizens of Gaza. And listen, this is what I'm saying is true because I've been there. I know I've seen it myself. I don't believe I'm slanted one side or the other. I try to be fair. But from what I've seen with my own eyes, what I know to be true is that Israel is by and large not guilty of what they're saying. They're not guilty of genocide. If Israel was trying to commit genocide, they could easily do that. They could kill all the Palestinians. They have the capability. But you know, since... 1948, 1967, when these these conflicts uh, have grown, so has the Palestinian population. I actually gave a quote to one of the reporters, a radio station in Chicago was asking me that while we were on that little island in Chicago. And they said, you know, what about all of the, you know, the claims of genocide? I said, well, if they're trying to commit genocide, Israel's doing a terrible job because the Palestinian population has grown by thousands since 48 and 67. He said, no, I don't think that's true. I said, go. 100% it's true. Um, Go look at the numbers. Israel is not trying to kill a Palestinian people. They're trying to stop terrorism. They're trying to stop bus bombings and stabbings and shootings and all the horrible things that happened on October 7th. The reason I went to Israel three times since that day was to go see for myself, to go talk to people myself, to go into these places. And folks, it's actually worse than what you know. It's a horrible thing. So what I wanted to do a little bit is go through the comments that people have made. Where are these protesters coming from? And these encampments are starting again at the college campuses, which is awful that the colleges are allowing it. I heard one reporter, I think it was Fox News, say this. He said, I've been interviewing a lot of these protesters, these Palestinian protesters. He said, so far, all the people I've interviewed, not one of them is from the Chicago area. Almost all of the counter-protesters in our little group of 30 were from Chicago. Where are these people coming from? Well, we saw my colleague Anna Steinberg say that there's busloads that are being dropped off of people coming in from out of town. And she was wondering, who, who's financing this? Is it Iran? Is it Qatar? Yeah, it's very well organized, guys. We came about an hour and a half early just to make sure we're safe. Safety is so important for us. We're not violent people. We're, we're people who love everybody, even them. We love them all. If somebody just asked, well, what, what message would I send to them? And all I'm saying is I'm sending light. I'm still praying for them because I love humanity and I will always pray for them. I will protect myself and my family, but I will pray for them. So what we're seeing is it's very well organized. We saw literally luxury buses parked outside here schlepping like grannies with their kafiyas, with their little walkers. I mean, it's super well organized. This is not some silly movement. This is for sure some good funding behind this. I don't know, Iran, that's how you do it. I don't know. Who knows? And it might be. People are investigating this. These agitators, and, and it makes it look like 
the whole United States is against Israel. That is not true. We're not as bold as we should be. We're not as visible as we should be, but there are millions and millions of Americans that love Israel, support Israel. If you look at all the comments on our YouTube channel uh, from this popular video that we filmed, most of them are pro-Israel. Thank you for going there. Thank you for doing what you're doing. I've gotten email after email from rabbis and Christians and uh, people from all over the country and all over the world that are saying, thank you for taking a stand. Thank you for doing what is right. Thank you for putting yourself in harm's way. By far, the comments have been very positive, but anytime you do anything to support Israel, to support God's earthly people, and God made a promise that they would have the land forever. It is their land, all of it. Anytime you go against that, you're going against God. I certainly don't want God's cursing. I want God's blessing, Genesis 12, 3. Let me read you some of the bad comments that were on our our YouTube channel. And I'll, and I'll answer these, okay? So we had one person comment that I needed to watch a certain person's coverage of the riots in Israel in support of IDF rapists and the debate in the Knesset on whether IDF soldiers who rape detainees should be prosecuted. Now, I don't know a lot about that situation other than the stories that I've read a few stories of the situation. And it looks like there may have been a mistreatment of Palestinian prisoners. That's 100% wrong. You never, ever have the right to do that to a human being, no matter what they've done. And if that did happen, and it may have, because people's wives and babies and uh, all sorts of horrible things happen, and it's human nature to take it out on those that perpetrated it, but it's still wrong. The government can't allow that, and it won't. Israel will have an investigation. Israel will take care of this. I think the, the Knesset debate isn't about letting rapists do whatever they want to do to prisoners. I think the, the Knesset debate is about if, if someone kills a terrorist, as the terrorist is killing people, you cannot hold that person that killed the terrorist responsible and prosecute him. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't be able to. If someone's stopping a terrorist who's killing people, injuring people, that person should be immune to prosecution. So I think that's what the debate is. Again, lopsided against Israel, lots of lies for Israel. But if someone did do anything like that, they should be prosecuted, and they will. Israel will not tolerate that. They have a good and moral government and court system. Another person said, poor Zionists, always the victims, kind of obviously making fun of us. Their government is carrying out a holocaust against other people. I mean, the word holocaust has been used to describe what happened to the Jewish people in World War II by Hitler. Don't use that word to describe Israel trying to defend itself. That's what they're doing. They're trying to defend themselves. In this film that my friend made, Hope in the Holy Land, he asked people, he said, if Israel today lays down all of their arms and weapons, what would happen? Everybody said Israel would be destroyed. Then they said, well, if the Palestinians lay down all their weapons, what would happen? And people said there would be peace. That's the truth. Don't say Israel is guilty of a Holocaust. Israel is there because of a Holocaust, because six million Jewish people were killed because they were Jewish, which is beyond wicked. It is demonic. It is satanic what Hitler did. That is not what Israel is doing. They're trying to defend themselves. And once again, these comments prove to me that people are against Israel because I think they're against God. And listen, you can be against God at your own risk, okay? I'm not gonna do that. Uh, the person says, people marching for peace have nothing to do with anti-Semitism. Of course, his wife is safe. Well, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's easy to sit back and type something on the computer when you're not in harm's way. I was worried about my wife. I couldn't see her. I didn't know where she was. I did have some security with me from our ministry and they were protecting her. But I just wanted to make sure because I was starting to get worried, not about myself, but about my wife. And don't you ever say that uh, I shouldn't have been worried about her safety when I should have. You people are really sad when you deny what Israel is doing. You are quite frankly in denial. Such sincere warped ideology. Israel has no soul. How come the massive pro-Palestinian marchers are the ones in the wrong? Because they are. Because they are. Now, if people want to protest against Israel, that's fine, but don't lie. 
Don't say baby killers. Don't say Israel's trying to commit genocide. These same people are crying intifada, intifada. Don't support that. Another person said Dietrich Bonhoeffer would have been totally disgusted with Zionism. Um, I guess we wouldn't really know what his opinion would be, although Zionism was part of his world. The Zionism started after World War I and this yearning to go back to the land. By the way, let me just tell you this. The Bible predicted that Israel would be scattered right after the time of Jesus. They were by the Romans and the temple destroyed. The Bible has multiple times said they're coming back. That's never happened in the world history. Folks, if you think there's no God and, and the Bible is wrong, Look at the regathering of the Jewish people. Zionism was around. It was their land. They were the indigenous people of the land, and they never kicked anyone out. The only time that they took land that they didn't buy, the Jews, were when they were attacked. And they counterattacked, and they defeated the enemy that was trying to kill them. Then they took land, and they should. That's what everyone has done in world history. You're attacked, you counterattack, you take land, it's yours now. You shouldn't have been attacked in the first place. So Dietrich Bonhoeffer, what would he think about the protest? I think he would be incensed that people would be lying once again about the Jewish people. He was surrounded by this in Nazi Germany. Of course, we would never know for sure, but we were carrying Dietrich Bonhoeffer's signs for a reason. Why? Because it was a silent protest against hatred of the Jewish people. That's what was happening in Union Park. And I don't believe he would be on the side of the Palestinian struggle. I think he would be on the side of the Jewish people. And don't say Zionist. Uh, when you say uh, you're against Zionism, but you're not against the Jewish people. No, if you're against Zionism, you're against the Jewish people. All Zionism is, is the, the thought that the Jewish people should have the land that they were given, that they took uh, thousands of years ago. And there's always been a Jewish presence in Israel. There's actually been more Jewish people in Jerusalem than so-called Palestinians. I say so-called because that's a name they adopted later. The whole land was called Palestine after Rome all the way up till the, the British mandate. So Jews and Arabs would be called Palestinian because they lived in the land of Palestine. But it's been uh, taken up by the Arab population in those areas and that's their identity now. But to say that Israel should have the land, that's a Jewish thing. And that's, what's, that's what Zionism is. And we should be for the Jewish people and for Zionists. I am a Zionist and I don't apologize for it. I'm a Christian Zionist. It says that Bonhoeffer would have been on the side of the Palestinian struggle against the Zionist theft of their lives, land, language, and culture. He wouldn't have walked down a road with you for two seconds. Well, I guess we'll never know that, but I think Bonhoeffer would be on the side of Zionists. So... Um, and, and the Zionists did not steal lives, land, language, and culture. They took back what was stolen for them. And if you're saying they're white colonialists, here's another th problem with that. You know who are the colonialists? They're, it's the Muslims. They took over, different Muslim groups took over Israel, colonized it. What was happening when Israel returned? That was a nationalist movement. These were Jewish people returning back to their nation. It wasn't a colony. They weren't creating a colony. It wasn't a, a white European thing. Yeah, there are white European Jews, but there's black Ethiopian Jews. There's Jews from Middle Eastern countries. Jewish people have all skin tones. And if you don't know that, you're ignorant. And I'm just going to say it, you're stupid. Okay. Somebody said, this is sick. We're 10 months into a genocide perpetrated by the U.S.-Israeli war machine. And you're going out of your way to support it. We are 10 months into a genocide. Hamas is trying to annihilate the Jewish people. That's in their charter. That's actually the charter of Hezbollah to the north, the Houthis. Uh, it's what Iran wants. So don't say Israel is trying to create a genocide when it is not true, 100%. How do I know? I've been there. I know for sure. I've investigated it myself. But I do know these other groups are trying to commit a genocide, and their chant from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. What that means, the river is the Jordan, the sea is the Mediterranean. If it's all Arab land, Palestinian land, guess what? That means they've eliminated the Jewish people. Okay, that's genocide, what they're calling for. The same person says, Bonhoeffer's beliefs, misspelled, uh, were kind of 
pretty anti-Semitic too, since he believed that Christianity had superseded Judaism and they had to accept Jebus, but was ultimately a, not gonna say the word, anti-fascist and would have been 100% against Israel, Israeli fascism too, free Palestine. So I don't even know how to answer that. I should probably shouldn't have even read that on this show because it is so ignorant, it is so stupid for someone to say that. Now, was Bonhoeffer maybe everything he should have been? There's a lot of Christians that were wrong on thinking that Christianity had superseded Judaism, but he still did the right thing and he, he was hanged for it, okay? Christians now, after Israel has returned, I don't, I don't know many Christians, as many Christians anymore that say the church has replaced Israel, that I think is false. Here's another one. Are those Christians praying for 20,000 babies and children killed in Palestine by Israeli apartheid? Okay, let's talk about apartheid for a second. Apartheid is exactly the opposite of what Israel's all about. How do I know? Because I've been to Israel. I see people that have white-skinned Jewish people from Russia and Europe. I see people that are immigrants from Ethiopia. They're Jewish. They're very, very dark-skinned. I see brown skin from Morocco and different places. Folks, Israel has all the different skin tones. There's no apartheid in Israel. And the wall that they put up, the so-called apartheid wall, is a security fence. It is to try to protect Israel from getting killed, the terrorism of the Palestinians. And so... 20,000 babies and children, I know is not an accurate number. There are even one is too many. But if Hamas attacked, who started this? Who started this? This is Hamas. If we're going to blame anyone for the death of innocent children, babies, who should it be? Hamas. Don't blame Israel. Israel is just trying to defend themselves, trying to eliminate the evil. And by the way, the population of Gaza and of so-called West Bank, Judea and Samaria, they're much better off by having Hamas eliminated. All the moderate Muslim nations think Hamas needs to be eliminated. And so don't fall for that kind of stuff. Here's one more. Certainly the pro-Zionist make it clear that they are as violent and as miserable as the state of Israel itself. I don't understand why they would say that, this person. They went to a peaceful demonstration to provoke. Um, if the Palestinian protest was peaceful and it should have been, then we have the right to walk around that with Israel flags and pictures of Dietrich Bonhoeffer silently. We never said a word. We never accosted anyone. We were just saying we support Israel, Christians and Jews supporting Israel. So we have that right to do that. It says it, it makes them uncomfortable that all over the world they are being condemned. If somebody wants to condemn me for supporting Israel, I'll take it. I don't care because I'm on the right side of this. As for Christians who support those Zionist movements who are also racist, shame on them. Evidently, they are not only ignorant of their own religion, but also like those they support of international law. And that's another joke that the court, international courts of the world are condemning Israel too when they should be condemning Hamas. There's no outcry that there's still hostages. 100, over 100 hostages. Many of them are deceased, but there's still probably 30 or 40 alive. Where's the outcry for that? Where's inter international out? Where, why isn't the UN demanding? Why isn't the president demanding that our Americans get released? So it says they are on the wrong side. I disagree with that statement. So I, I just wanted to like, first of all, get this off my chest, speak truth and say, I feel honored that I've been able to stand with my friends that are Jewish in Chicago. And I have a lot of friends in Chicago that are Jewish. I thank them all the time for what they've done for me because my Jesus, my savior is Jewish and they gave me my savior, everything that I have, my hope of eternal life, my uh, peace that I, I, I walk through, even though I'm walking through this scary moment, I felt peace because I felt like this was the right thing to do and God would protect and he did and he did. And so all of that is because of Jewish people. They brought me my Bible. Almost every author of my Bible are Jewish. And so if, if there's a Christian watching and you say, well, I, I don't support Israel, I don't support the Jewish people, and you're believing this stuff, 
that Israel wants to kill babies and committing genocide and going against international law, that's untrue. And we better stand up and say that. And I'm sure we're getting all sorts of nasty comments on this video. I don't care because I want to speak truth and no one seems to be doing this. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Some are doing this, but not enough. We need to all stand up for Israel and the Jewish people. So Jesus said these words. He said, for God so loved the world. And by the way, that's everybody. Even the haters that wrote these things, even the Palestinians that were beating the bodies of the hostages as they were coming into Gaza, God so loved the world, Jesus said. That means everybody. That means you, that means me, that means uh, even terrorists. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He was talking about himself. That whosoever, again, that's any of us, whosoever believeth in him, trusts in him. It's not about religion. It's really about not us trying to do better or us you know, belonging to some sort of a church or group. It's whoever believes in him. In who? In Jesus. Should not perish, which is hell, but have everlasting life, which is heaven. That is good news. And I hope that you know him as your savior and you have found the peace that I have found and the assurance of eternal life that I have found as well. Once again, I thank my Jewish friends for giving me my Bible and my savior. And I also want to make sure you know we film a lot of episodes over the years in Israel. If you want to learn more about the land and the people of Israel, go back through our YouTube channel and watch our incredible series. We have a lot of series called Discover Hidden Israel. We have one, one and a half, two, three, four, five, and six is about to come out. And all of these videos would be a huge blessing for you to watch. We also would love for some of you to consider helping us make this content. And if you'd like to donate, you can do it right here on the channel or to donate more, actually the same amount, but more comes to us. You can go to our website and donate there, which is ingrace.us, ingrace.us. We are so thankful for all of you. When you're on our website, look for all of our other resources. We have books and videos and, and all sorts of things that will really help you understand these issues. May God richly bless you, and I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day.